Hello, hello. God bless you, everyone. I'm so glad to be here for another Monday for Call Me Servant. I'm so sorry I missed last week. Um, last week, I had a family vacation right after that. Jumped into a business uh, summit literally right after landing in Dallas. Um, so I just had to take some time back, you know, spend some time with my family. And then uh, get on fire with this business for Call Me Servant and um, also my... Uh, my actual business, DD Desirable Designs. Um, it was an amazing experience with like-minded entrepreneurs that are kingdom-minded. Very beautiful, very life-changing, and uh, just being a part of the group Life on Fire, which is a movement uh, for kingdom-minded entrepreneurs, has been amazing. And I wouldn't change it for the world. I'm so glad that I pressed through. So much opposition came, but God literally stacked everything orderly to where I was able to make it and able to get the fullness of um everything that they were just basically giving out and being able to have fellowship with like-minded believers was just so awesome and on another level uh today what i wanted to talk about is this thorn in my flesh this thorn in my flesh has anybody have a, ever had a thorn in your flesh what i mean by that is uh as like paul spoke about and i just want to read uh second corinthians 12 7 through 9 said and lest i should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations there was given to me a thorn in my flesh the messenger of satan to buffet me lest i be exalted above measure for this thing i besought the lord thrice that it might depart from me and he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Have you ever just literally, you know, just prayed on something, something that has been, you know, just really, you know, bothering you, something that's been weighing you down, whether it be a sickness, whether it be depression, whether it be, um, and say something with your kids, something with your spouse. Just it could be anything, you know, that you sought God on, you fasted for, you prayed for, and you believe that God is gonna do it, but he kinda you feel like he's kinda taking his time with it. Have you ever been there? If you haven't been there, then you might not quite understand. Me personally, I have been there quite a bit. And you know, when it gets hard, sometimes you get to the point to where you kind of question God or you know, God, why? Like, I, I I think I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do. Am I missing something? Am I not fasting right? Am I, is my praying in vain? And give me one moment. I'm sorry. Let me close this here. Sorry, got my alerts up. Ooh, got my alerts up. I'm sorry. Back to it. But have you ever, like, really just prayed to God? And like, God, I don't know what's going on. I've been praying. I've been fasting. I've been studying my word. And it seems like it's just here. It's just here. I've done it over and over and over again. You may have even got even got a, a prophetic word of, oh, it's going to happen. Or God's going to do it. And you're like, okay, when? <laughs> you know, when is it going to happen? I'm pretty sure that Paul felt a lot like us when he was saying, I, I saw God over this over and over and over Think about it, how it would feel like you're praying for others and you see others get their healing or you're praying for others' marriages and you see their marriage prospering or you're praying for others' children. You're seeing their children coming in and getting saved. But it's like, God, I'm doing what you're, supposed, what you're telling me to do. But what about me? What about me? And sometimes it can get discouraging after a while, but I just want to be here to encourage you to keep doing what you're doing. Paul did it, and, and after God spoke to him, he humbled himself. He humbled himself and showing him that, hey, it's not by us. It's not by our power that we're able to pray for others and they be healed or we're able to, you know, uh, pray for others relationships and their relationships be healed. It's not about that. It's about the power that's in us, which is the Holy Spirit. When we're weak, God is he's able to be made or shown to be strong. It's not on our strength and our strength alone. And that's our humbling. That's how God humbles us. He allows he, he himself does not cause the sickness. Let me say that or whatever is going on. It's the enemy just as he, uh, the enemy has permission to basically do everything to Job. God gave permission because he had faith in Job that he, he knew that he would, you know, follow through. He knew that he would stand strong and still lean on God in the end. And because of that, Job got dust, 
I mean, blessed with double, you know, so we have to think about all that, think about all the accounts on how God showed himself mighty and strong when in helpless situations. Like God is always here for us. And I just want to speak about a personal experience and I am going to be raw and in truth. And if any men are listening, you know, you might not want to hear about everything, but women going on, but it's the truth. And it may not be exactly what I went through, but it might be something else that you personally went through and you can apply it in that way. Me personally, I had it. I was like the woman with the issue of blood. Like after I had my son, Elijah, um, I went to through literally for three years straight of bleeding and it wasn't no little, you know, every now and then. No, it was every day and my body was going through. I mean, my hormones was raging, you know, at the same time I was going through a separation with my husband. So just think about the man. So I have three small kids, three small babies. And at that time, they're throwing tantrums and so much is going on. And it was just me by myself. I was, um, I went to go stay with, at the time, it was pretty, just pretty much me and my uh, grandmother, the one that passed away this year. Um, and, you know, she, she's sick. She had things that she was going on with her. You know, she really couldn't help much. So it was just literally me and my kids, you know, she, she worked or whatever. And then at the same time, all this is happening. I literally got laid off from my job. They shut down. Uh, the building and moved it to Florida. So I had either two options move to Florida or move to Temple, Texas First of all, I didn't know anybody in Florida um, I surely didn't know anybody in Temple, Texas and I'm so I was so used to Converse like uh, No, it's a no for me, you know, I'll just take that L and um, Do what I got to do until the end, but then it was like a domino effect everything start happening and um as I said, I was going through it in my body, and after years of just bleeding, bleeding, bleeding constantly, I had suffered with severe um, anemia, and it was literally times to where I would get up, and I would, uh, you know, I'm, I'm washing dishes, and I just feel like I'm going to pass out. I'm trying to vacuum, and I feel like I'm about to pass out. You know, the kids tugging on me, mommy, 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 and I'm just... You know, I'm just, so, I'm just Lord, and I'm praying, and I'm fasting. I literally fasted, and, and I have family that can attest for this, you know. Um, literally fasted for three days while this is going on in my body. Um, and, and I'm fasting, and I'm praying, I'm studying the word, I'm seeking God. I'm like, God, just do this for me, heal me. And God literally gave me a vision, a vision to where I had, um, I literally like seen like the inside of my body and I could just see the blood thin and out. So just, that was just like God giving me hope. God, I mean, he usually blesses me with visions and I know the visions that he gave me, they're so vivid. They're so lifelike. Like I can't tell. It's literally to like, like, okay, whoa, I'll wake up in the middle of the night and I'll see something. And I don't know if I'm dreaming or if it, but it's literally a vision. And then I'll like, you know, get up like, okay. And I don't forget it. So I know when it's God. And he also gives me dreams as well. And in this case, he gave me a very vivid vision to where I seen the healing taking place. And after that, I'm like, okay, God, you know, I, I'm seeking God. Lord, take this away. Take this away. God is hurting my body. God is messing with my mind. God, take this away. I, I'm, I'm hurt. I'm broken. I'm, I'm tired. Too much is happening at once. Literally, job stripped away. Lost my apartment because I had, I had to leave because some reasons that were going on in my marriage. And after that, I, Lord Jesus, and before prior, let me say this, before prior to me leaving from my apartment, I was already going through in my body with my son. My son was young and my two daughters. Um, and so I, I've already had a lot of blood loss. I've already had, but it was going through prior. So when I leave and then I get by myself with my girls and my son, you know, it's just like, whoa god this is too much you know and i i was seeking god constantly constantly i was i was trying to go to church i was trying you know and i, I just felt so alone i felt broken i felt defeated a lot of my family kind of brushed it off like oh, okay she's exaggerating like oh, okay she she'll be all right or, oh okay she's making excuses Okay, she's not being a big, good mother. She's not very attentive. She's not, be, and and it it broke me. So the more and more I heard negative feedback, the more and more I heard, 
you know, um, I'm not doing a good job. When I did the best I could, I did the best I could. I felt so weak in my body. There was even one account to where I'm praying because I literally did not know. The matter of fact, I went to the hospital. I'm sorry, and it may seem all over the place, but I just want to make sure I give an account for everything just to show you how serious it was. I went to the hospital. I was at a seven. I was at a seven in my blood count. And I believe the regular uh, blood count number is supposed to be like 31, 33, something around there. But I was at a seven at the time. So, you know, I went back. I didn't have insurance at the time. And I just went back home and, and tried to do what I could. I tried to take, you know, grape juice. I tried to eat peanut butter. I tried to um, do, because at that time I was on my weight loss journey. And I, I lost, in total, I lost 100 pounds. But I was doing smoothies. And I was, you know, watching what I eat. Tried to basically do the, do it the natural way to where I'm doing uh, kale, spinach, blueberry, you know, different, different stuff, uh, peanut butter, grape juice, just different stuff or whatever. And at that same time, had the audacity to be trying to sell my plasma to get some extra money because at the time I wasn't working. Every time God denied, nine times out of 10 God denied because my blood count, it was too low. It was too low. And I'm like, you know, so it, I'm going through y'all. I was going through, I felt so broken and at this time you know i'm praying and i remember one night i had to call my who i call my sister she's my best friend slash cousin slash whatever <laughs> but my sister jasmine i'm like you know i need you to I, I just wanted to run up to the store right quick so i could get some juice and at this time i believe uh, my kiddos was with their dad you know so i had i was just by myself and i i just felt so weak and i'm like i just need you to follow me to make sure i get from the house to the door to make sure i make it to the house i mean i'm sorry to make sure i make it from the store which was right around the corner but that's how scared i was i was like i just need you to follow me i didn't need to fall out somewhere and nobody could find me you know so i went and i went to the house she followed me to the house i got the juice i tried to drink a little juice i legit barely could walk i went I, I laid down. I'm like, God, I don't know if I'm going to wake up. I was like, Lord, just, you know, just if it's my time, it's my time. I was, I was about ready to give up. I literally did not know if I would wake up that morning because that's how weak I felt. I couldn't call for help. I couldn't, you know, I told my sister to go on. You know, I feel like, okay, I made it. It's okay. Thank you. And when I literally laid down. I had to go to the, I couldn't even get up to go to the bathroom. That's how weak I was, y'all. Like, I legit, I was dying. I felt like I was dying. And I knew I was because prior, I think it was a couple of weeks I was at a seven. Think about this. I knew I needed a blood transfusion, but I didn't want a blood transfusion. I'm like, God, I don't want a blood transfusion. I don't want, I want you to heal me. You show me you're going to heal me. Heal me. You know, I'm seeking God on this and I'm praying, I'm crying out. And, but at, at the time, I'm at peace. And then I'm like, okay, no. Something in my spirit told me to fight. He was like, no. So I started calling out to God. I started saying I rebuked that spirit of death. You know, I, I legit was rebuking death out my body. And, you know, I closed my eyes. I went to sleep. And I see my, you know, I, I woke up. I'm like, okay, God, you know. And I had a little more strength. I'm like, God, I know that was you. To be able to respond rebuke the spirit of death. I'm like, God, I can tell death to flee me, but I can't receive healing. Like, what's going on? You know, at that time, I was just like frustrated. I didn't understand. And I remember at the time, I, you know, I, I couldn't make um, church. I just felt too weak and I was tired. And I believe it was like some type of revival or something. I can't remember. I know it was a pastor, I believe, from the Bahamas. I can't really remember his name. I'm on his blank right now. But I remember he said, you shall live and you will not die. And he just started speaking life, you know. And I, I had got encouraged. I'm like, thank you, God. At this time, before that, I had a scam that, you know, because at this time, I'm not in my right mind. My mind's all over the place. My hormones, I wasn't making logical decisions. I'm like, God, all I knew was to pray, read my word, 
you know, try the best I can, do what I can. And my mind is just like, God, I need you. I need you to heal me. And he, he spoke about healing in the body. I'm like, okay, God, I had tuned in. I believe it was on live stream from Dallas, Full Gospel Holy Temple. And I'm like, okay, God, I know this is for me. He said, you should live and you shall not die. I had just got scammed out of a whole bunch of money. It was just, I'm like, oh my goodness, because I thought I was going to get a car. I had car problems. My car was dying on me. I'm like, God, what next? <laughs> So it was just so much and I'm like, Lord, help. <laughs> and I remember just pleading with God and I just kept hearing in my spirit suddenly, suddenly, suddenly I held on there to that. And I remember, I, you know, I was, it was one day to where I was just, you know, going through. And I remember my baby, my baby girl, Maya, at the time she was four years old, she handed me a note card. Because at this time, I was writing scriptures. I was trying to encourage myself. And she just found, like, a note card and handed me, literally handed me the note card. And it said, the same scripture I'm talking about, it says, thrice have I sought you for this. And I'm like, okay, God. He led me to that scripture on that card i don't i literally don't even remember writing this down i probably was just looking for scriptures of healing and just writing down stuff and she brought it to me at the perfect time though i know god that was a god thing and i said okay god from that day on i legit just started clearing my healing and when i did it initially let me tell you this it wasn't right away i literally i would start to bleed more it was even heavier and I'm like, oh my gosh. Like, I was like, you know what, God? No matter what I see, no matter what I see, it's going to happen. God, you're going to heal me. You showed me that vision. Thank you for my healing, God. Thank you for my healing. And I legit said this every day. Every day. Every day. Every day. And don't you know? Don't you know by that? Literally, I don't even remember the exact date. Suddenly, dried up. And I heard. On that day, I heard, you'll never have to deal with this again. And I said, thank you, Lord. He's Since then, he has regulated me. I have not had to deal with it. I think, and I praise God, because I know it was only by him. I went to, a, I think it was a couple of, no, it was a couple of different hospitals. Nobody could tell me why. Nobody could tell me why I was having this problem. I heard, you know, people saying, oh, if I was you, I would get a hysterectomy. Or if I was you, I would get surgery. If I was you, you know, you hear so many things. I said, but I had to take a sound like, no, it's according to my faith. It is according to my faith. The Lord told me it's according to my faith. So if I, this is what I'm believing God for. This is what I'm believing God for. God showed me a vision. And I know he is not a man that he shall lie. I know I'm going to stand on that. God is going to heal me. He did just that, y'all. God, who God is a mind regulator. But through that all, let me just tell you about this process. Through this all, God was dealing with me on how to submit my feelings, my emotions to the Holy Spirit. Not to no longer allow the enemy or my feelings to dictate the decisions that I make. I have so many notes, so many writings from me being separated, from me being, you know, I can literally write a book. And God told me I was going to write a book. That is coming into pass. I'm working on something else that's going to be published soon, which is a journal. So keep a lookout for that. But after that, I'm going to write a book. I have journals on the experience, on the revelations that I got from God. God speaking to me so clearly. God even speaking to my children. At four years old, my little girl Maya, and now the enemy, I need y'all to pray too because the enemy tries to attack her a lot. My baby girl has a calling on her life. She wasn't even supposed to be born. If I would have waited one day later to have my daughter, I asked them to schedule because I had to have C-sections. Well, from what I was told, because I had an emergency C-section for my first girl, uh, Angel. If I wouldn't have requested for that C-section to be a day early, my baby girl would have died because she ended up um, eating her, um, I don't want to say it, but she ended up, you know, eating her feces. So, I don't know how that happens, but she would have died. So, when she, when I had her, you know, they're yelling, cold blue. I don't know what's going on. I'm looking at up at my bonus mama, like, what is going on? You know, she looked kind of scared, and I'm like, you know, I'm kind of out of there. And I'm like, I don't know what's going on, but through that pregnancy, because at the time, I was separated from my husband. I, I was, uh 
you know, I was kind of detached. I didn't, you know, I, I didn't plan on a second pregnancy, especially from it being so close to my first daughter. I was already going through, I was already struggling. And I had just recently, literally with my daughter, my second daughter, that's when I rededicated my life back to God. I had backslid and ended up marrying my husband. Then literally 2013 on New Year's, I ended up giving my life to Christ, you know, and I, I was just crying out to God. And in this, um, anyways, I'm sorry, <laughs> let me stay on track. But while doing that, I, uh, they were yelling cold blue or whatever. It brought back, it brought love, you know, and, and, and I know she may have, she may deal with a spirit of rejection and I pray against that now. And the enemy tries to, you know, plant lies in her mind. So I try, I, I try and ask God to be the mother that she needs because, I know from her background or, you know, the things that I experienced, you know, dealing with mental health and everything, it can go over to your kids if you're not careful, if you're not, you know, on it. And I don't want to ignore her feelings because I know how I felt as a child, you know, and um, the thing that I'm actually working on now is uh, journaling to freedom from anxiety and depression because God now has allowed me to overcome that. And just looking at how the setup was, it was not easy. The process, everything that's going on, it literally led up to this moment to where I'm able to reach out and help others or able to, you know, speak healing to others. You know, I was prophesied to a long time ago about you know, a lot of things. And I'm like, how in the world is that going to happen? I don't see it. But literally, God is lining up things to where it's like, okay, God, I see you it's hard but i see you you know just keep me through this process because sometimes it can be draining but it's not according to my strength my gifts my capabilities it's on god and god alone to him be all the glory you know i'm just the vessel so literally the whole experience like my baby girl you know she she goes through but at the time she was four years old my baby girl was four years old comes to me she she wakes up she's just in a daze and i'm looking i'm like baby what's wrong what's wrong why are you looking like that and she said mama jesus talked to me and i said huh she said mama jesus talked to me jesus came in the room jesus talked to me last night so i got my little notes you know i got my book i'm like baby what'd he say you know because i'm, I'm not gonna shut her down because i know god used to talk to me through dreams like when i was a little girl he'll give me dreams of him coming back and, you know, it used to terrify me. It used to scare me. I really didn't have many to talk to it about. But my my granny, my granny stayed with me at the time. And she was a prayer warrior. She was like, oh, baby, that's Jesus. You, he won't give your life to God. You know, she was telling me that for the longest. And I was just a runner. I would run, 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 because it used to scare me. So my baby girl said, mama, first the angel came. And the angel came and got me. And then he took me to Jesus. He said, she showed me everything, mom. This is a four-year-old. If y'all would have heard the words that she was using, I'm like, I've never heard her say that in her life. I'm like, okay, this is God. And she said, mama, he showed me the animals being created. He showed me the trees being created. He showed me everything, mama. Then he showed me a baby being born in the manger and and um the people set up around mama i got to see it. he said he told me that's me you know that was me being born he was explaining to her how he's the creator how he created you know animals how he created the trees how he was born he was showing her everything he she said mama then he even showed me him on the cross and and i was there and i was i went up to the cross he said mama nobody would help him i wanted to help him but i was scared mama i was scared because then they would kill me too and i'm like wow my baby girl so then she says mama i went up to the cross and i said jesus wake up wake up jesus but he wouldn't wake up so I kept trying to wake him. And then he told me, he said, she was like, I want to stay with you. I want to stay with you. And he said, no, you have to go back. My baby girl said the angel then took her back to the room. The room that we were in at the time in my dad's house with my grandmother. You know, my dad wasn't really there at the time. So it was just like me and my grandmother, the one that passed away. And she said, mama, she said, mama, I want to go back to Jesus. I said, 
whoa, 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 not yet, boo, not yet, not yet. I don't even take you from me yet. You know, as a mother, you like this. God, you know, I don't want you to take my baby down, but we know that they're just beautiful gifts that God gives us to borrow. But in this time, I'm like, I know she has a major calling. All my children, I know all my children have major callings on their life. But in this particular area, I remember also with her, my mind, my, my, she has, sometimes she'll have tantrums and stuff. And I'm seeking, you know, to look out to get more help. Uh, just to, for her to learn how to channel her emotions, to how to, how to basically express herself in another manner. And I know this because I went through depression all, pretty much all my life. Since a child, I went through depression, anxiety, etc. And, you know, in the black minority community, Hispanic, I mix with Hispanic and black. And in both communities, it's kind of like shined upon. And especially you go to church, it's like, oh, that's just the devil messing with your mind. You know, you got to get to the root of some things. And I'm very um, adamant on that point of, you know, finding further, further uh, help to where it can but I, I know it's something that also she can be delivered from most definitely most definitely praying for that I know she has to have her own process her own journey but I want mama to be the one that instills that in her and let her know that she is chosen the enemy tries to mess with her mind often and it's like baby girl you just don't know how powerful you're gonna be something powerful baby I remember one time baby girl was like she was like two and i'm like oh god and i remember i was so frustrated because i'm tired at this time you know i'm just you know going through and i'm just like oh god she's such a cry baby why is she such a cry baby and immediately i heard the holy spirit say shut your mouth one day she'll cry out for the nations don't you know i shut up so quick we have to be careful even if you frustrated it doesn't matter God has a plan for our children. We have to literally be on our knees seeking God for them. Not to shut them down, but to listen to what they're going to say. And I don't know why I veered off over to that, but obviously it was for something God led me to share that as well. But all this is just going on through the process. Just showing you the process of how God works. You know, a lot of things we don't understand, but it's literally for our making. He's pruning us. He's molding us. For my marriage, I've learned how to be long-suffering. I'm learning how to be, uh, you know, learning how to be a prayer warrior. For him to get, for me to get on my knees. For me to be able to pour out to others. You know, from my shortcomings. And not only looking at the spouse. Even if the spouse is doing wrong. The spouse is unsaved. What are you doing? You know, are, are you having an attitude? It's just so much that goes into this. And again, that will be in the book at a later time. Um, and I'll get into that further, you know, down the road. But God is doing amazing things right now in my life. He's opening doors that no man can shut. And just by the process, by me being obedient, as I stated in the last video, God asked me this year, as a, at a moment to where you know I was kind of weeping crying out because I was thinking about you know my grandmother's death and and I remember being I thank God that I was able to have that time with her not knowing it wouldn't be that long but just being able to get to know her get to know her story because I didn't really understand to be quite honest I didn't understand uh the grandmother that recently passed I really didn't understand why she was the way she was you know and and God opened the door to where she could tell me her story. And, you know, I heard for her because there was a lot of unfinished things in her, a lot of ministry in her that she allowed church hurt to, you know, get in the way or, you know, things that happened in the past or cruel people. And it's just like, God, I was just crying out and weeping. And I was thinking about my other grandma, it's such a beautiful prayer word. And, and she's faithful to God. And I just realized, you know, just about all the things they had to sacrifice, all the things that they had to give up to make sure their family was good. They're putting them, their time into family, putting their time to make sure their grandkids us was good, making sure that their children was good. But yet they, you know, wasn't able to fully go into what Christ had or has for them, you know. And I'm like, God, I don't want to be like that. I don't want to spend my life working at a dead-end job just to be, you know, forgotten and replaced in 2.5 seconds. I don't want to, I want to live a life of, you know, just working and my kids not being able to see me. I'm like, God, I want more. I want more. And immediately when I said that, God said, I heard the Holy Spirit begin to minister to me. What are you doing with your talents? 
for you to say anything. What are you doing with your talents? You went on the same thing. You're doing the same thing. You went on the same journey, pretty much. What are you doing with your talents? All that I've instilled in you, what are you doing? And you know, don't get me wrong. I'm making baby steps. I started my business last year, which was a big step for me. But I felt stuck. I'm like, God, what? you got so much for me. I do poetry. I, I'm a creative mind. I love to do different things. I'm like, God, I know this ain't this is not for a reason. You put all this in me for a reason. I have book support. I have so much. And I used to tell my, you know, my sister slash cousin slash whatever I call her, sister Jazz. I'm like, when I die, I want you to publish my poetry. Why? Why will you die? Living and just existing, not not living to your full of potential, burying my talents. God considers that evil. What are you doing with your talents? What do you have in your hands? What are you doing with your hands? What have God blessed you? you with that gift nothing too big nothing too small god can use anything that you have you're fearfully and wonderfully made you have your own identity in our dna they say they have one percent of what makes up a difference in us that one percent is different god instead that for you what god has for you is for you it's not meant for anybody else to grab it's not too late if you're breathing my pastor often says if you're not dead you're not done if you're still breathing it's for you. It's for you. But you have to be obedient. Fast. That's where I messed up. I try to be obedient 10 years later. No. But don't you know, once I start moving, once I start seeking God, once I start, you know, saying, God, okay, as soon as you say something, I'm acting on it. That's when he start opening doors. Of course, the enemy try to come in and try to, you know, get you discouraged or whatever. But no, he start opening doors that no man can shut. Because what God has for you, God has for you. No enemy in hell, no devil, nothing, no principality can get in the way of it. If you're being obedient, God has you. He's covering you. That ministry he has installed for you, that testimony he wants you to give, that person he wants you to reach out for, that's for you, boo. That's for you. It's all you. Who cares if somebody do something similar? They're not you. Can't nobody beat you being you. You are worthy. You are a child of the king. Do you understand that? Do you get that logic? Literally reversing our whole way of thinking, our whole way of being. I had to get a lot of stuff out. I'm like, Lord, make me a woman of integrity integrity what i say even if i'm if i can't do something or if i'm not absolutely sure let me stop saying yes and committing to something i'm not sure of i want to be known as a woman of integrity i want to be known as a woman that was helpful that was reliable that's faithful you know you literally have to rechange your thoughts the way you see things instead of looking this looking at this as a thorn in your flesh look at it as, as man god trust and he believes in me that much that he gave me this man he must know i'm strong he must know i'm an overcomer and he must know he knows he made you he created you he believes in you now believe in him that it's not you but it's him that's made strong it's his strength it's his strength. All of this is so much bigger than us individually as a unit. It's for his glory. It's for souls to be saved. It's for, you know, ways to be made. It's to break generational curses. It's to break everything that the enemy has held over you. But you have to change your thinking. You have to be obedient. Trust in the word of God. Pray, seek him, stop dwelling on that sickness, stop dwelling on that problem, dwell on him, dwell in him, dwell in him, stop praying for that same thing, if you know that God told you that he's going to heal, everybody gets, gets their healing different, you know, not everybody's going to be suddenly, sometimes it may be over time, maybe it be in heaven, wherever you are in life, just trust God. And continue to live. Don't just exist because you have a sickness. Don't just exist because you have a problem. No. You keep pouring into others. You keep doing what God told you to do. And I guarantee God is going to break everything that is unlike him. He's going to do a new thing in you. And that's all I have for y'all. I hope that you're encouraged that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think. And I just want to end with a prayer. If we can bow our heads right quick. Father God, I pray that whoever is watching this video, God, I pray that 
I minister something that would help them, Father. Whatever that you have given me, Father, I ask that you will bless them, God. If somebody is going through sickness in their body, Father, I ask you to touch them right now. Father, I come against every spirit of infirmity right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, by your blood, we are healed. By your stripes, we are healed, God. We know, God, that you are a healer, God. We ask for your glory, God, that you will touch their body right now, God. Touch them right now, God. Let them even feel healing flow through them right now, God. Father, I ask that this problem will never come back again. Father, I ask that you will give them instructions on somebody that you're giving instructions to for a in order to allow them to get the healing, God. Father, let them be, have a obedient heart, God. Let them hear what the Spirit is saying, God. Give them clarity, God. Give them clarity on what exactly to do, God. Whether it may be exercise, whether it may be letting go of something, God. Maybe it be stress, God. Father, give them peace that surpasses all understanding, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, God. I believe that it is so, God. And it's according to your word, God. Father, if there's anybody that's having a thorn in their flesh by relationships, Father, I ask that you work that thing out. Father, the king's heart is in your hand. Father, I ask that you come against every attack right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I ask that you silence the enemy, God. I ask that your will be done in their life, Father. That everything that you have for them will be for them, God. And that no man can touch it, God. Father, I ask that you restore. You are a God of reconciliation. God, I ask that you restore, Father. I plead the blood, God. That you will pray for their love. I mean, that they would be healed, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Whether it's trauma, whether it's spiritual, whether whatever it may be, God. Heal them, God, right now in the mighty name of Jesus, God. Let reconciliation flow, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, let us not look at it as the thorn in our flesh no more. But let us look at it. Let us look at it as for your glory, for your honor, God, to trust you, to build our faith, to gain strength, God, to have a testimony, to shout from the rooftop, God. Let us praise you in the valley. Let us praise you on the mountaintop, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, I believe it is so. Amen. I pray that this blesses you beyond measure, no matter who you may be, no matter what situation you may have. I just challenge you to switch your thinking on the matter. And allow God to be God. Remember, it's in Him that we live and have our being. It's not us. It's not our strength. It's not our, you know, I don't care how many mountains you can move. I don't care how many demons you can cast out. At the time, like I said, I was able, I've, I've been able to rebuke Satan and see it fly off of others and go out the door. I've seen some stuff. God has given me revelations. But when I cried out at the time, I still was going through in my body. He did it at his time. His time is perfect. And there's so much that I got out of that experience. It may not be easy, but God will give you strength. And I'm praying strength right now in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. You guys have a great day. And again, tune in next Monday for Call Me Servant. You guys be blessed.